What if Russia kept Alaska? From 1580 to 1778 the Tsarum of Russia, later the Russian Empire would expand greatly to the east by defeating the Sibir Khanate and conquering the sparsely populated North Asia, now known as Siberia. They would expand all the way to the Pacific Ocean, but wouldn't stop there. In 1741 Russia would launch the Great Northern Expedition in which they discovered modern-day Alaska. Russia would start to colonize it ever since 1799, but after the Crimean War it was clear to St. Petersburg that they could no longer hold it, and so they sold it to the United States, partly so that their arch-nemesis the United Kingdom, which controlled Canada can't take it. Russia sold it fairly cheaply, as it was just icy tundra, but soon later the United States found gold there. Alaska would also gain importance in the Cold War. Later the United States found copious amounts of gold there and it is starting to get even more important as the North Passage is getting more important. These changes cause Russian nationalists to demand Alaska back, but so far they are unsuccessful. But what if that didn't happen? What if Russia kept Alaska? In this timeline Russia decides not to sell Russian America to the United States. Towards the end of the 19th century Russia would discover gold in Russian America, which makes them a little bit richer and encourages Russians to settle in Russian America but other than that history until 1914 doesn't change. Russia doesn't fare too well in the First World War, as they get pushed out of Poland and Lithuania and face two revolutions in 1917. I will split the video now in two timelines. In the first timeline, which is more realistic, the Whites, after losing on the mainland, flee to their colony and move their capital to Novo Arkhangelsk. Mikhail Konstantinovich Diderichs would take charge of the colony and restore the Russian Empire with Grand Duke Nicholas Nikolaevich of Russia as its emperor as Nicholas III. This exiled government, propped up by the West, would basically be like a Russian Taiwan. The civil war is officially still going on and both sides would claim each other. In 1929 Nicholas III dies and since he had no heir, his brother Grand Duke Peter Nikolaevich of Russia becomes Tsar as Peter IV. Right on the beginning of his tenure he would have to face the Great Depression, which severely hurt their economy as they rely on trade with the United States and Canada. Just two years in, he already died, being remembered as nothing but a failure and his son Prince Roman Petrovich of Russia would be crowned Emperor as Roman I. Under him Russia would finally recover from the Great Depression and in 1937 Mikhail Diderichs would die and Anton Denikin would become Prime Minister. In 1939 the Second World War still breaks out and in 1941 Germany still invades the Soviet Union. Some officials wanted to attack the Soviet Union in order to retake what they claimed to be theirs and there were even secret meetings with the Nazis. But it abruptly changed in December when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. Imperial Russia even declared war on the Axis and framed it as supporting their Russian brothers in the moment of their greatest crisis, but their participation has little to no effect in the greater war. After the war hostilities with the Soviet Union would flare up again. In 1947 Anton Denikin would die and Alexander Kerensky would become Prime Minister of Russia and would start to liberalize the nation. In 1953 Russia would hold its first parliamentary election and the two biggest parties would be the center-left K-Days and center-right Octoberist. Other than that there are smaller parties of which the two biggest are the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party and the Black Hundreds. Alexander Kerensky managed to be prime minister by forming a grand coalition with the two main parties and remains in office for 16 years before he resigns in 1969. Just one year later Alexander Kerensky would die due to old age. The constitution of the new Russian Empire is almost identical to the one of 1905 as it doesn't see itself as a new nation, but rather as the continuation of an old one. Nonetheless, the constitution of 1953 does give the emperor less power and makes him just a figurehead. During the Cold War Russia became of great importance as they are close to the Soviet Union and are a stopping point for aircraft. In 1968 they would discover oil which combined with American and Canadian investments would make Imperial Russia one of the wealthiest countries of the world, basically like a cold Gulf state. In 1978 Roman I dies after having ruled for 47 years and his son Prince Nicholas Romanovich becomes emperor as Nicholas IV. 
In 1991 the Soviet Union still collapses and there were talks with the Russian Federation whether they should unite, but talks went nowhere as both sides want to be in charge. Furthermore Alaskans aren't really eager to join the Russian Federation as they are far wealthier, and thus would take the brunt of any tax burden. When Putin became president talks officially ended and Alaskans don't want to give up their democracy. In 2014 Nicholas IV dies, and his brother Prince Dmitry Romanovich becomes Tsar as Dmitry III. He would just rule for two years before he died. He had no son and his father Roman, grandfather Peter and great-grandfather Nicholas didn't have any heir and so the line moved back all the way back to Nicholas I of Russia and to his other son Grand Duke Michael and lastly to Dmitry's cousin thrice removed Prince Andrew Andreevich as Andrew I. His reign was just for five years before he too died and his son Alexei Andreevich of Russia became emperor as Alexei II. Imperial Russia would be hostile to Putinist Russia and would support Ukraine in its war against Russia. Putin would have claims on Imperial Russia, but the American Navy prevents him from doing anything. In this timeline Alaska basically becomes a North American Taiwan. Due to oil it would become extremely wealthy and it might use that money to make other countries recognize them over the other Russia. As for the United States, in terms of politics the loss of Alaska wouldn't really manage to influence anything. The closest would be the 2000 election, where Bush would have 268 of the required 268 electoral votes, but this on itself wouldn't change anything especially when you consider that Hawaii also might not become a state as they became states at the same time to balance each other out, as Hawaii is liberal and Alaska conservative. In this second timeline, which is far less likely, the Reds actually managed to cross the Bering Strait, and are in control of Alaska. It would either become part of the Russian SFC or become its own SSR with the former being more realistic. Soviet control over Alaska would be a thorn in the sight for the United States and Canada. These differences would have to be paused during the Second World War, as they would now fight together against the Axis, but would flare up again in the Cold War. The Soviets might not deploy nukes on Cuba, but rather on the Alaskan panhandle. And unlike with Cuba, the United States could do nothing against this. The United States might ACR irrationally and in a worst case scenario a nuclear war might break out. The constant threat of being nuked might influence American society as the Soviets would be more hated. In 1976 Republican Gerald Ford manages to defeat Democrat Jimmy Carter, but would be plagued by the same problems as Jimmy Carter in OTL. In 1980 Democrat Ted Kennedy would defeat Republican Ronald Reagan. In this timeline Reaganomics don't come to be and, instead a more progressive economic system. He would also invest in environmental policies and student financial aid, would expand LGBTQ rights and might even establish a universal healthcare system. This would essentially crush neoliberalism of which Ronald Reagan was with Margaret Thatcher one of its two most important politicians, so neoliberalism would also be weaker around the world. In OTL Republicans and like half of Democrats are supportive of Reaganomics, and maybe this might be here as well with Democrats and half of Republicans. In 1984 Ted Kennedy won re-election against Harold Strassen. But of course the Kennedy curse would strike again, and so in 1986 he would be gunned down, and his vice president Sid McMath becomes president, and largely continues his policies. In 1988 he would defeat Republican Bob Dole, and would witness the collapse of the Soviet Union. In 1992 George H.W. Bush defeats Jimmy Carter and raises taxes. He then wins again in 1996. He is still not on board with the progressive model, but still loosely keeps it around. In 2000 and 2004 Barack Obama became president. 9-11 and the war in Afghanistan still happen, but the Iraq war doesn't. Due to the 2008 financial crisis John McCain becomes president and just like Bush he would also continue the economic policies, but moderate them. In 2016 Bernie Sanders defeats Donald Trump and would go further than previous presidents, and would be the most progressive American president. In 2020 Bill Weld defeats Bernie Sanders, and he would bring an end to the second progressive era and begin the neoliberal era. He is a total libertarian. He slashes government spending and taxes, and might decrease the power of the government.
He would be pro-LGBT abortion marijuana, environment, or charter schools. He also reduces military expenditure and would withdraw American forces from other countries and begin an America First policy, which would be catastrophical for American allies, especially Ukraine. Russia would hardly be any more powerful with Alaska, as they already have a lot of oil, and it has just a small population, and nothing really changed for Russia. In this timeline Reagan doesn't become president and Reaganomics don't happen however in a worst case scenario a nuclear war may happen. In both of these timelines, excluding the worst case scenario outside of the United States Alaska itself and maybe Russia not much changes, but a well presidency could bring major changes. If you liked the episode, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.